Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. Today I'm going to show you how I've made this spinner card. I've got similar on the channel before, but I haven't done one with the acetate. So this is six by six. It's a gatefold, but when you open it, your character will spin in the middle and I've added the extra fold there. But because I've used the stamps from my latest Papercraft Society kit, they are symmetrical stamps. So it means that you can have them on the front as well as on the inside. And I just thought it worked really well with this kind of style. And then you've got your little parachuting snowman there who spins around in the middle. So I'm gonna make another one today, but we're gonna have Father Christmas in the middle there. So let's get started. So I'm using supplies from my Papercraft Society box 37. I believe there are still some open stock units. I will double check and I'll link it in the description box below. But you can use anything and it can be any theme as well. So you want a piece of eight by six cardstock and along the eight inch side, you want to score at one and seven. You also don't have to have the acetate. So if you don't want this effect, then you could just cut yourself a piece of 12 by six and score at three and nine. If you want it to fold in the middle, score at six as well. OK, I'm not going to score my middle score line just yet because I want to add my pattern paper. So I've cut this piece here from the papers in the kit and this is to five and three quarters squared and that's going to go in the middle there. In the set you get this circle here and that's what I'm going to be using to cut my aperture but I used that one with the silver card that also comes in the kit and then just one of the circles from my circle dies here and I used that size was three and three quarters just to give me this frame which is going to go in the middle there just to add a little bit of bling. So I don't want to stick this straight away. I just want to place it down. So I'm just popping it in between the two score lines there. Just make sure you've got a nice equal border. And then I'm going to place my circle down. Now you could have this higher up if you want, or you could have it lower. What did I do on that one? Had it lower. So I'm going to go higher up for this one. I want to make sure that I've got room for my frame. And you want to make sure that you've got it in the centre there. So just measure from this score line to the die. So it's one and a quarter on that side and it's bang on one and a quarter on that side. So I'm just going to tape that one in place. And then I'm just going to tape, just take some of the stickiness off, just pop them Pop them on your jumper or something just to get some of that initial lint off and then I'm just going to tack the pattern paper because what I want to do is conceal the string between this layer and the cardstock so I'm going to run that through my machine okay so that's all cut nicely so next I want to take the thread so this is a kit you do, it does come in a box but I just condense everything down in the envelope so you've got your booklet with all the inspiration your dies you stamp set, you get two stencils, and then I've got a load of my images that I've already cut, um, you know, coloured and everything there. And then you get your glitter card, all your different coordinating cards and the pattern paper as well. You can see my scraps there that I've got. You get some pegs and you get the thread so that you can have everything spinning. So I've gone ahead and stamped and coloured two of each of the images that I want to use. So I'm going to have... The penguin here once we get the acetate down so there'll be a penguin on the front and the back we're going to have santa in the middle and we're going to have him framed and then i'm going to have my snowmen in that top corner there so we'll get rid of that and then my sentiment this one again we because it just works brilliantly with them flying in to land there so we're going to have the we there and then i've got the little holly sprig there so I might have that one at the top I've got it at the bottom on that one there and then I've cut all of the snowflakes there in the glitter card and then we've got these pieces which I'll go through with you in a moment so get together what it is that you want to go in the middle and we don't need that at the moment we just need one of the images so I'm going to have him on him straight on oh, no, I think he looks good on a slight angle and then I'm going to take some of the thread you want enough that's going to cover the width of the circle 
or if you don't have this you could use fishing line people use dental floss you want a non-woven or non-twisted thread if it's twisted then when you wind it up it's just going to untwist and you're just not going to get a good motion so you just want something like what i'm using so i've got that piece there and then i'm going to use my red tape because this is really strong i would use a hot glue but because i'm going to add a score line through the middle here i'm just going to use this double-sided tape so i'm just popping a little bit at the top and then along the bottom and i'm going to take the backing off and then i'm going to stick it on the top first like so and pull it nice and taut so it's stuck on the top and the bottom there and then i'm going to pop another piece of tape over the top so it's sandwiched in between the two and just cut away any longer pieces there okay i'm not going to take the backing off of these yet i'm then going to pop underneath so the string is on the top here and i just want to make sure that it's you know going through half of my santa there cut another piece of tape there and i'm just going to run that through the center like so and then again, I'm just going to place that down. So he's in the middle. And now that string is stuck on him. And then again, I'm going to put another piece over the top. There's all different ways to do these. You can apply the string first to the character and then attach it to this, which I've done many times. But this is just a different way. And then you're going to take backing off of that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my liquid glue here. So, and then take the other one and just place that over the top like so give that a minute to dry whilst that's drying I can now stick this one over the top and then I'm also going to stick my frame down I've just cut myself two pieces of three by six acetate, just sprayed them with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, surgical spirit, just give those a good clean. And then with this piece here, you just want to fold and burnish your score lines. So you want them folded so they're value folds. You might want to go back over them in your scoreboard like so. Now, if you, you don't have to have the middle score line, like I said, you might just want to keep it flat inside. I'm going to add the score line in a minute. Next, we're going to stick these onto each of these panels here. I'm going to use my red tape and I'm going to run a couple of strips down each of these side panels. Okay, take the backing off of that side first, do one at a time. Take your piece of acetate and just line up the outer side first. And then lay that one down. And just go over the tape make sure that's all secure so now you can see that's just a simple gatefold they are overlapping slightly i don't mind that because it's the acetate if you don't like that just trim a little bit off the sides there now i'm going to add that middle score line you could do this before you add the frame probably i'm going to line up the score line here with the one inch and you should see the other one lines up with the seven so then you just want to score at four so i'm just going to push down there just so I know I've got the right track there and then come up from the bottom like so. And now I can fold that in half. So now that pops out naturally when you go to open it and you can see your swinging image there. So now to decorate so i've got these two strips here which are one by six so exactly the same size as those panels and they're going to go over like so and i'm going to cut two strips of red and i'm going to use the stencil in the kit and just just very subtly stencil over it and stick that on the front you're not really going to see it these ones here i'm going to stick one down once i've stuck this stripy paper down like so and then put some tape and stick the other one on the front and again, I'm going to have him down here. In fact, they cover that little mark that I've got there. There we go. For my sentiment, I'll do that now, actually. So this is a piece of three by three quarters. 
You can have it as wide as you want. I've done it as three quarters, so it tucks behind my sentiment there. If you've got a bigger sentiment, then you could probably go a bit wider. Along the three inch side, you want to score at half an inch, one, two, and two and a half. And you want to do a valley, mountain, mountain, valley fold. You basically want it to fold behind like that. Then take your glue and you want to add it to the two back tabs. And then you're going to sit this across the fold. So you want each tab to rest itself. Be better if I lay this down. So that when it's flat, it sits over the fold. So if I bring that up, can you see? Each side is across the fold there. And what that then means is that your sentiment can stick on the top and it pops out as well. Don't worry if you put that on crooked because when you add your sentiment now, you can just make sure that that's straight. Okay, so I'm gonna get everything now stuck down. Okay, so that's the finished card. I've decided not to use that little sprig on this one. And you can see how he, he spins around there. So just wind it up like so. And then you'd close it all up, pop it in the envelope. And then when that person opens it, he's gonna spin. And then he'll just continue to just kind of move and just yeah, do his thing. I think it's lovely. You've got your space on the back there to write a message. So I'm just going to use a silver pen to write on the back of that one. And then that will just go into a six by six envelope. I, I mean, if you've got dimension and you're worried that it's not going to fit in one of them, pop it in a bouncy envelope or pop it in a box envelope. And then what I'm going to do is finish it off with some accent glaze, which I can show you better here on the wings there and the propeller. And then I've used it on all of the little parts of the parachute the berries there and on the penguins beak so i'm going to do that and then i can let that all dry i'll just bring that one back in again there so you can see how they both look i think they're lovely so i hope you've enjoyed this little spinner card from me today just a slightly different way adding the acetate just gives it a very different look so if you've made these kind of cards before and you've not used the acetate give it a go as always, I'll link the product that I've used in the description box below. I'll pop up some other spinner cards now here as well, because you might want to watch those next. And if you haven't subscribed and you've enjoyed today, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. And that way you won't miss out on any future videos. See you all again soon. Bye.